everyone. Welcome back to Doodling Through Education. For my CC students, this is a Cycle 3, Week 11 science video. For everyone else, that just means that we're talking about the endocrine system. So we'll be talking about what the purpose of the endocrine system is, as well as what is in this system. Before we get started, I wanted to remind you to subscribe to this channel so you never miss an episode. And if you would like to support Doodling Through Education, you can do so through Buy Me a Coffee, and I put a link for that in the description. Without further ado, let's start doodling. The main purpose of the endocrine system is to make hormones. So, what are hormones? Well, hormones are the chemical messengers of our bodies. They carry information and instructions from one set of cells to another. In reality, the endocrine system impacts all the different organs and processes in our body. Surprisingly enough, people aren't the only things that have endocrine systems. All animals, including even insects, do too. So endocrine glands release hormones into the bloodstream. So your blood lets the hormones travel to all the other cells in your body. The endocrine hormones can control anything from mood to growth to development to the way our organs work to metabolism and reproduction. The endocrine system also helps to regulate how much of each hormone is released. This can depend on the level of hormone already in the blood. Many different things affect hormone levels. Um, this can include stress or sickness or infection um, and even changes in the balance of fluid or um, if you are needing minerals. The body has many different endocrine glands and they all serve a purpose, but let's narrow it down and talk about just five of these glands today. First, let's talk about the pituitary gland. This is at the base of the brain and it is actually only no bigger than a pea. Despite its small size, this pituitary gland is often called the master gland. So. What does this mean? It means that it makes hormones that control many other endocrine glands. It stimulates other glands to actually make the hormone. So let me give you an example. The pituitary gland makes something called thyrotropin. This stimulates the thyroid gland to make thyroid hormones. The pituitary gland also makes a hormone that controls the growth of your body. It also makes a hormone that helps women deliver babies and helps women produce milk so that they can nurse their babies. So in all, the pituitary gland is very important. Now, let's talk about the thyroid gland. The thyroid gland is located at the base of the neck and it is shaped like a butterfly or you could say it looks like a bow tie. The thyroid gland produces a hormone that controls how fast your cells can burn the food that you eat to release energy. Now let's talk about the adrenal glands. These glands are located on top of your kidneys, one on each. The two adrenal glands are divided into two parts. The outer part is called the adrenal cortex and this controls the mixture of salt and water in the body. And the inner part of the adrenal gland is called the adrenal medulla and this makes hormones that raise your blood pressure and heart rate when your body is under stress. 
Moving forward, we have a pancreas, and this pancreas is located just behind your stomach. It is a gland, and it produces two very important hormones called insulin and glucagon. They work together to keep the right amount of sugar in your blood. The pancreas is actually part of the endocrine system and the digestive system. It's part of the endocrine system because it secretes hormones into your bloodstream, and it also makes and secretes enzymes into your digestive tract. So it is also part of your digestive system. If someone's pancreas does not produce enough insulin, what do you think this means for that person? It means that your body has a hard time controlling the amount of sugar in your blood. This condition is called diabetes and many people in the world have it. So this brings us to talking about what happens if a particular gland is damaged or diseased and does not make enough hormone. Oftentimes, medication is required to supplement that hormone in the body to have fully functioning body systems. And that's all we have for today. That was just four glands of the vast amount of glands that we have in our body. But as you can see, those four glands are very important to the function of our body. So what I want you to do today is to research other glands in your body and see what they do and if they are important in the processes in your body. And I want you to just marvel at how many different hormones help control different functions in your body and how God has created all of these things to work together so that you can have a great life in the world that he provided for you. So on that note, remember to be kind, follow God's will, and take care.